our hope and our peace. Welcome to the Weekly Word, and thank you for tuning in. This is our weekly online devotional for those of you who can't join us for our Sunday morning worship service at 9.30 a.m. If you live in the Vale Valley, though, we highly recommend you come. We'd love to plug you into community, live worship, and a sense of belonging. Here at Gracious Savior Church, we have a mission of loving Jesus, each other, and all people. If you see anything on the screen right now that interests you, let us know. But here's a couple ways this summer that we're engaging with this mission specifically. We have a suicide loss support group every Monday in June at 6 p.m. at the Single Tree Community Room. This is for people who've lost a loved one due to suicide. If you know someone or you yourself are going through that pain, please come to the suicide support group. We are replacing Brewology with Grillology. Up Valley will meet at me, Josh's house, Wednesdays at 5 p.m. And Down Valley will meet Tuesdays at Jason's house at 5 p.m. If you want to get in touch with me, Dial 970-393-6267, and then you can reach out to Jason for the Down Valley details. Pay attention to the dates. It's not all summer. Mine starts in late June, and Jason starts in mid-June. We are also starting a mountain bike group. 
If you want to get involved with that, if you have a passion for biking out in the outdoors, text Matt at 832-552-2793. We also have our prayer group. Our prayer group is split up into two groups. So you have twice the opportunity to connect with Jesus and others. Thursdays at 6 p.m. starting June 16th. And the next day is June 17th. Friday's at 9 a.m. We also have a men's camping trip at the end of July. If you're interested, RSVP on our website. Shoot us an email. Let us know that you want to come. And the summer games are August 8th through 12th. Registration is now open on our website for kids 3rd through 8th grade. Woo! That's our summer of awesome events. And now here's a message from God's Word with Pastor Jason. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In church this coming Sunday, well, we're recording this on Thursday. You'll be hearing it this Sunday. But in church, we're having two baptisms. It's pretty incredible. We're baptizing a baby and we're baptizing a 75-year-old. It's pretty awesome. So for today, I thought I just want to talk about baptism for today. And I want to talk about baptism by starting off with a story. It's a story some of you have heard already. If you've heard it before, I apologize. If you haven't, you're in for a good one. My daughter, Emmeline, 20 years old, going on a mission trip with some friends to Kyoto, Japan. As her dad was a little nervous, a little anxious, my baby girl's going off to a faraway place where won't have very good contact with her. And and she's like, Dad, don't worry about it. Kyoto is one of the safest cities in the world. I said, Emma, how do you know this? And she said, I Googled it. So of course, of course, it must be correct. So she goes off to Kyoto, comes back two weeks later, with a tattoo. I said, Emma, you got a tattoo? She goes, yeah. I said, how much did it cost? Because my dad, you know, that's the first question I ask. Would you pay for that? And she goes, it was free. I said, how did you get a free tattoo in Japan? She said, let me tell you. And she did. So Emma and her friend uh, told one of the uh, young people at this church in Japan that they wanted to get a tattoo. And the guy said, well, I better go with you. And they said, okay, that'd be great. We'd love it if you'd come with us. So nine o'clock at night, they ride their little bikes in the middle of this massive city in Japan. And they find this building. Emma says, yeah, there was a staircase on the outside of the building. It wasn't lit very well. And we walk in there and there's this guy there. He's got tattoos all over him. And he, he hears what we want. And the guy says, Come back tomorrow night at 11 o'clock. And I said, Emma, you didn't. She goes, Dad, I did. So my baby girl and her friend and some stranger they met in Japan, they they ride their bikes through this massive city, 11 o'clock at night. And on their way there, uh, uh, their interpreter said to them, well, I need to come with you because in Japan, uh, tattoos are not common. In fact, typically if a person has a tattoo, they're they're in a gang. And um, it's very hard to leave the gangs in Japan because to to leave the gang, you have to cut off a finger. And so I want to go with you to make sure that this guy was okay. And they said, well, did he look okay? They're like, yeah, he's, he's probably fine. He's probably fine. So they ride by their bikes, 11 o'clock at night, to some back room in Japan. They go up there, and this guy's just covered with tats. And Emma said to him, I'd like the Japanese symbol for light uh, on my heel of my foot. And the guy says, no, 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 it'll look horrible there. Let's put it above, a little higher on your leg there. And Emma says, okay. The guy starts doing her tattoo and she notices he's missing a finger. His pinky is gone right above the knuckle right there. And she gets her tattoo and her friend gets her tattoo. And they're all done and they say, how much do we owe you? Which I would have asked at the very beginning, but they didn't think that they asked it at the end. And the guy says, nothing. 
It's an honor for you to be here in my country and to be doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. No charge. And they said, we need to pay you. We, we, we wouldn't be right without paying you. We need to pay you for this. You did a, a nice, a great job for us. He goes, nope, nope, I insist. The tattoo is free. So my daughter has a free tattoo from a nice gentleman with nine fingers in Japan. It says light in Japanese on her ankle. I personally believe it says soy sauce, that he played a joke on them. I don't know, who knows what it says. The reason I mention this story is because um, it got me thinking about baptism. When you have something done to you, when you have something physically done to you, it's a visual illustration of your identity, who you believe yourself to be. I mean, after all, have you ever asked someone about their tattoo and the person has said to you, well, it doesn't mean anything really. I just, I just figured I'd just get a tattoo. That never happens. Whenever you get a permanent mark on your body, it means something to you. It communicates your identity. And baptism communicates your identity. Baptism in the New Testament was often called sealing, or the seal of the Lord, or the seal of Christ. And a seal is, is something, you, you place your seal on something, either to, to claim your ownership, that you own it, or that it has your authority. So like if you put a seal on a letter, it means that whoever's delivering this letter is speaking in your name and in your authority. You have your seal placed upon it. Or you place your seal on something to mark it as yours. You own this, your seal is upon it. And we see this term sealing as it relates to baptism in the New Testament. We see it in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul writes, Now it is God who makes, uh, I'm sorry, it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Baptism is a, a seal, a seal of ownership that gives the gift of the Holy Spirit. Again, we see this in Ephesians chapter 4. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Again, we see there that baptism is a sealing it's putting the name of Jesus upon you through simple water and simple word, acclaiming you as his. We also see baptism in terms of adoption or family. We see this in Galatians chapter 3. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. And again in Colossians chapter 2. In Jesus, you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. That one's a little more complicated. In the Old Testament, to be part of the family of God, uh, the males at seven days old were circumcised. As the gospel spreads to Gentiles, right? And they're like, how do we become part of the family of God? Because we're not big fans of the Old Testament method. And they're like, hey, no worries. We've got baptism for you. And baptism makes you, male and female, part of the family of God. Jesus, in his mercy, adopts us as to part of, be part of the family. Or to put it in the words of Vin Diesel, I don't have friends, I have family, right? Jesus makes you a part of the family through baptism and puts his Holy Spirit in us and calls us children. This is why we, we baptize babies in the Lutheran church. Obviously, you know, little Cameron Grace on Sunday isn't going to be 
I believe in Jesus. He does, she's two weeks old, three weeks old. But Larry, who's 75, he can say, I believe in Jesus. And for him, baptism is a physical sign of a commitment made that he made to God. And that's awesome. For Cameron Grace, it's a little bit bigger. It's God making his commitment to her. And for Larry as well. That Larry can look back on his baptism and he can say, in hard days, in trying days, in days where he wonders, if, is God really on his side? He can say, but I'm baptized. I'm part of the family. And little Cameron Grace, she doesn't know much, but she knows who she belongs to. And she knows that her mom is hers. And she will make demands on her mom <laughs> for food and comfort. She knows who she belongs to, even at that young of an age. And baptism is a beautiful way that God says, you belong to me. We're family now. Baptism is also a way that God gives his grace in a physical and tangible way. Peter, in his first sermon in Acts chapter 2, he said this, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. So when Peter says in baptism, you get some gifts, you get some presents, just like every great birthday party, you're getting some presents, right? The first is forgiveness. That in baptism, you receive the gift of forgiveness, a physical sign of a gift given. We look at little cute little Cameron Grace and we're like, does she really need forgiveness? And in one sense, you're right, right? She hasn't done anything wrong, right? She hasn't sinned yet. She will in a few years. She'll be stealing her brother's toys. She'll be throwing temper tantrums. But right now, she's beautiful. She's awesome. But not innocent. We're all broken. And our brokenness isn't just what we've done. Our brokenness is part of who we are. We're born broken into a broken world and a broken creation. This world that's around us is beautiful and amazing, but it's not perfect. There's tornadoes and tsunamis and earthquakes and lions and tigers and bears, oh my. And likewise, we're not perfect. We're born broken. Our bodies are broken with diseases and, and cancer. And spiritually, we're broken. And so in baptism, God gives this amazing grace to claim us as his, to put his seal upon us, to adopt us into his family, and to extend that beautiful gift of forgiveness, even for beautiful, sweet Cameron Grace. And this oneness, this unity is encapsulized in Ephesians chapter 4 when Paul writes, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Baptism is a physical act of God gracing his forgiveness upon you, uh, calling you his own, adopting into your, your family, placing his seal, if you will, his tattoo on you to claim you as his. Always, as long as you allow him to be. He will never leave nor forsake you. Now, I'm not recommending for everyone to go out and get a tattoo, but if you'd like to, go for it, right? But I am encouraging you to rest and rejoice 
in God's commitment to you. That when you walk out this week and life gets hard and you're wondering, God, do you even care? To reflect back and say, but you know what? But I'm baptized. He's done this for me. If you're not baptized and you're curious about it, please give me a call. Would love to talk with you about that. Uh, last month, I got a call from a young lady in Atlanta, Georgia. She had a question about the sermon online. So she called and asked about it. It was beautiful. It was awesome. Thank you so much. So no matter where you live, give me a call. Would love to talk with you about baptism and refer you to a church in your area that loves Jesus and lifts up baptism as a gift to you. Um, if you are baptized, man, click off this computer, walk outside boldly and confidently because God, God doesn't have friends. He's got family. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this gift of baptism. Thank you for Larry Yaus and Cameron Grace, Lord. Thank you that you have called them as yours. You've placed your seal upon them. You've adopted them into your family. You've extended your amazing grace to them, Lord God. They have gifts upon gift upon gift. And we do too, Lord. Thank you for this gift of baptism. This washing, this sealing, this adopting, Lord God. May we re rest and rejoice in your gifts always. Thank you, Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may it guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus, our Lord, for life everlasting.